This video gives some examples of using the midpoint rule to approximate an integral, or the area under a curve. We want to estimate the value of the integral of f of x from 2 to 12 using the midpoint rule and five rectangles. Here's a graph of our function. We want the area between 2 and 12 underneath the curve. Some values of the function are also given in the table. Five rectangles means we want to subdivide the interval from 2 to 12 into five subintervals. Each one will have length given by the width of the big interval, 2 minus 12, divided by 5. So that means each rectangle will have a width of 2. I'll call that number delta x. And I'll draw my rectangles. The heights of the rectangles are supposed to be given by the height of the function at the midpoint of the sum interval. So the subinterval from 2 to 4 has a midpoint of 3, and I look at the function's height at 3, and that gives me my height of the rectangle. The subinterval from 4 to 6 has a midpoint of 5, and I use the function's value at 5 to find the height of my rectangle. Similarly, I use the midpoints at 7, 9, and 11, and find the height of my function there to give the heights of the next three rectangles. Now I can approximate the area under the curve by the area of these five rectangles. So the area of the first rectangle is going to be the width of the rectangle, delta x, times its height, which is f of 3. The area of the second rectangle is delta x times f of 5, and so on. Delta x is always 2, and I can get the function's values at the midpoints either by estimating from the curve or, more accurately, from looking at the table. For example, f of 3 is 1.64. I add these numbers up on my calculator to get 34.84, and that's my estimate of the value of the integral. In our example, we represented the area of our five rectangles with this expression. Delta x, which had a value of 2, represented the width of each rectangle. And these other values, f of those values, was f of a midpoint of a rectangle, or a subinterval that was the base of the rectangle. So if we have n rectangles instead of 5, our area, given by the midpoint rule, will be delta x times f of m1, where m1 is the first midpoint of the first sub little rectangle, plus delta f x f of the second midpoint, and so on, all the way through delta x f of mn. This can be written in summation notation as the sum from i equals 1 to n of delta x times f of mi. In other words, the midpoint rule says that the integral of our function from sum a to b can be approximated by this expression. Let's do one more example of using the midpoint rule. This time we'll use four rectangles. Since we're taking the interval from 2 to 22, the width of our rectangles will be 22 minus 2, or 20, divided by the 4 for the four rectangles. This gives us a width of each rectangle of five units. Remember the rectangles start at 2 and go out to 22 and they each have width 5 so the first rectangle is going to go from 2 to 7 then from 7 to 12 then from 12 to 17 and then from 17 to 22. Therefore the midpoints will be always halfway in between those pairs of numbers, so halfway in between 2 and 7, their average is, let's see, 7 plus 2 divided by 2, so 9 halves, or 4.5. The average of the next one, 19 over 2, would be 9.5. The next one, 14.5. And finally, 19.5. Those are going to be my midpoints. So now I need to add up delta x times f of 4.5 plus delta x, f of 9.5, and so on, so that where my function f is ln of x. So this gives the following expression. Using a calculator, 
This evaluates to 46.99966. Let's round that off to 47. For comparison, the actual value of the integral that we're calculating turns out to be 46.617, so these are actually very close. In this video, we use the midpoint rule to approximate the values of integrals by using rectangles whose heights were given by the function's value at the midpoint of intervals.